we are delighted and honored to uh, make an exclusive presentation. This entire show is dedicated to one of the uh, pillars of the Indian film industry who could probably be considered the father of the Indian film industry, none other than the great Mr. Raj Kapoor. prepared a special introduction. Now this Chandrasekhar reporting from Bombay, India, over to Jaya in the studios right there in Toronto, and she will tell you who this great personality is. We are indeed honored to be able to bring you a special today on one of India's greatest actors, Raj Kapoor, to whom movie making was a way of life. His father, the late Prithvi Raj Kapoor, was for 20 years one of India's leading stars until he gave up the screen to foster the Indian theater movement. When Mr. Raj Kapoor was in his 20s, he became one of the nation's leading stars. And at 22, he produced, directed, and acted in his very first independent production, Arg. He started off his career, though, as a clapper boy when he was just a teenager. And most of his films received great awards, both national and international. <laughs> Mera Nam Joker made him one of the ten best directors of the world. His movie Bobby was a great commercial success and is said to be one of the most romantic movies of all times. Mr. Raj Kapoor, as you know, has produced and directed a large number of films. He was the first Indian producer to receive the coveted Grand Prix Award for his film, Jaak Tera Ho. And his acting in this film, they say, was just superb. As an artist, he had a sense of universality about his work and a finesse that remains unsurpassed by anyone else in the Indian film industry. He was far from being rigid or conventional. He was a man with the world in his vision. Over now to Chandrasekhar and the great Raj Kapoor. Let me begin with greeting all your viewers and thanking your organization for having thought of bringing this part of the world to people in that hemisphere. It is a great honor to be talking and telling something about us here in India to your viewers. We in this part of the world have been manufacturing a lot of entertainment for the millions of poor people in this country. And I I'm also one amongst the many who have contributed in bringing together a lot of people in this country at one beautiful integrated solidarity yeah. of humanism, belonging, understanding one another. This is what we try to achieve. How far we have been successful I can only say this, 
that in a diverse country like India, where you have so many cultures, many religions, a secular state, languages, yet the Indian cinema has been one very vital force in bringing the East, West, South and North to know something about the other. And I hope this has been a very great contribution that we in this industry have done. This place for me is a room which way back before my studio was built, it existed on this very land, which you see now the Arki Studios built up in 1948. But it has great memories. And the sanctity of it is that in here, there have been very great many artists who have contributed in whatever Raj Kapoor is today, or what Arki Films is today. It is just not only Raj Kapoor, or these four walls that you see of the studios, but the great people, the artists, the performers, the music directors, the lyricists, the writers, thinkers, painters, who all of them have come in here and have contributed in making what Arke is. And so for me, it is like Sanctum Sanctorum, a place where though many have left me, and I am also on the same road now, the last yeah, lap of life, but there is always somebody behind who takes over and perpetuates what people have given and left behind. And I am terribly enriched whenever I sit down here and think, and I look at them, and I thank them. And I only pray that let us not wither away. And if here at this place, no matter what happens, can consolidate a lot more in bringing the minds of people together and contributing to this cinema art of ours for people, maybe in Toronto or maybe in Bombay, to understand one another, I think I have done my job as an artist. That is fantastic. Raj Sahib, it's tremendous to see the kind of work and the variety and the types of roles that you have performed as an actor yourself. But there's been a beautiful philosophy. In many of your movies, there is always a mixture of an element of uh, sensitivity to romance as well as comedy. Of course, when you are young, you think young. <laughs> and being young... One of the most fascinating and beautiful aspects of it is romanticism. That you fall in love. I am a, quite, a, I think, a, a lucky man. God gave me this beautiful ability to fall in love with anybody in anything around me. Tum pyaar se dekho, hum pyaar se dekhe. Pyaar hua, iqrar hua hai. Romanticism and the sensitivity, as you mentioned, they both go together. You cannot be in love if you're not sensitive. And if you want to love, you must be sensitive. So these two are actually one within each other. And I made my earlier films basically was what I saw around me. And in the earlier years with the post-independence in India, country being subjugated for more than 400 years and the different empires, where it left a lot of ugliness along with beautiful things also. So what we did then, we saw the environment, the social effect it had on people, and we tried to weave 
a fabric of a script with the environment and the influences of that environment, but we presented it with romanticism, with a certain sensitivity of affection, of belonging, of humanism. In totality, it worked out was love. So that is how the earlier films of mine, they have been, which have been social conscientious films around me, which I've made, they have been plain love stories, but yet with certain moral and idealism, and there have been realism, realistic films also. But none of them were devoid of one basic element and the greatest coherent force which brought all the elements together, and that was romanticism. Just for the benefit of viewers, we're going to be showing you some delightful segments from some of the movies that he has been talking about, and I'm sure you're going to love every day. <laughs> Natchab, they were tremendous. They brought some very pleasant memories for us. Another beautiful thing that we have observed in your movies in the past, even as a child when I was watching your movies, and as I grew up and I watched more of your movies as well, there was this great element about, like in the Western world, Charles Chaplin had a certain image that he was projecting. And in the Eastern Hemisphere, there were a lot of my friends who always thought of you as the Charles Chaplin. The kind of brought out was not really slapstick, but it was very sensitive. At the same time, it was subdued but beautiful humor. Tell us a little bit about that characterization, sir. You see, the, the basic, of course, there is no comparison as far as Mr. Charles Chaplin, the late Charles Chaplin, the great Sir Charles Chaplin, and Raj Kapoor, it's uh, <laughs> a lamp in front of the sun. His art was a great piece of work which will remain down memory lane forever and ever as long as human being exists on this earth and a flower blooms. That's beautiful. He inspired you a lot, right? Yes. What inspired me from his work was the little man. And I found that in our country, at a point in time when I just began my career, that I saw little men all around. The downtrodden, the man beaten for no fault of his. And then I saw his work, his films. And that was where the little man of the street was created for this country. The man who thought that the pavement was his birthright. The footpath where he slept the nights was his birthright because that belonged to his government and that government was his government. So the only right he had was the footpath because he was always downtrodden. Now this similarity of being the beaten and the little man is the similarity which the source of it is Mr. Chaplin. The 
शहर ने मारा जहर को मुर्दे में फिर जान आ गई Mr. Raj Kapoor's emotional portrayals were different it is said because he probed into the depth of human emotions with a peculiar subtlety of his own we now bring you some very emotional scenes from the golden jubilee Raji tell me there was a very beautiful statement that you made about the uniqueness of the indian audience the mass audience for cinema tell us a little bit about this sir i i suppose you know that as of today india produces more than about 730 or 40 films a year in all different languages and it's it's a lot of film a lot of material of course quantity wise we have yet to achieve a lot quality wise but then here comes in this beautiful audience of this country Now, to tell you something as to why, for instance, uh, other medias have not been of any danger, major danger, any consequence to the cinema industry is, leave aside the uh, big cities here in this country, a few of them, which is the entertainment for the millions of people of this country. they have no entertainment and the only entertainment is cinema and which i think the indian cinema is the cheapest ticket in the world where the highest seat in an air conditioned plushed seat is 50 cents or less the highest seat as compared to 5 dollars or more in the west now and yet with this very cheap ticket because we have millions of people and the only entertainment for them is the cinema kisi ko mila hai na kisi ko milega pyar se sara socho kabhi aisa ho to kya ho they're such wonderful people gracious and kind that they go through all kinds of problems and troubles in trying to reach a theater procure a ticket stand in queues with the hustle and bustle and if it's raining or if it's a clearing sun yet they are there to buy that ticket and to see a film and as i have always said and i'll say it again to you for your viewers that if you don't cheat the audience they're very kind to you they may not be as intelligent or critical as other audiences but for what they have come there they know that they want to be entertained now what is entertainment to some it may be a beautiful song to some it may be a beautiful dance number to some it might be an intellectual exercise of a play of a drama of something that gives him satisfaction intellectually and he identifies himself with the situation or characters to others it might be just giving vent to their pent up emotions in a big fight and he feels that he is the hero who has kicked about 50 people with a blow and he claps and he shouts and he yells and he says oh lovely film lovely film the film may might not have anything in it except but it had this that gave him satisfaction so that is one reason where many people have said why do you have music in your films why do you have everything it's a soap box of it's it's a kind of a hodgepodge of everything it is because to whom am i catering this i am not making a film for drawing room conversation <laughs> I am making a film for the millions of this country to be entertained. So I have my music. I have a nice beautiful romanticism. I have a beautiful script, some dances, some pictorial visuals. Tell him something about how life is all about with other people and how you could also if 
better your way of life. You can learn a bit of that. And here is your fight also and a little bit of uh, magic also. And there we are. Everything is happy and all is well with the world. Everything ends happily and God is great. So he feels happy about it and he says it's a beautiful film. And the same film, if you came to some of the big cities here, you'll find some of the pseudos. Oh, what was in that film? It was something silly. It was something foolish enough. But if you had put one of them who were in the audiences, they said these silly fools don't know the value of good entertainment. So as I have said, that the Indian audience is the most gracious audience to be found anywhere in the world. They are kind. They'll do anything if you just satisfy them a little bit, make them happy, make them forget their daily problems that they face and confront in living in modern socio-economic system of governments and people and laws. He feels, yeah, and the bureaucracy and all goes into that one envelope. And he feels, ah, for that brief moment, he's forgotten everything. That's entertainment to him. He goes back home, he loves his children, he loves his wife. Mr. Raj Kapoor talked about the lack of entertainment besides the cinema for those who live in the outskirts of India. Let's listen to what he has to say regarding the reason for this. The reason is that millions in our villages do not get an opportunity to have any kind of uh, a diversion towards life, entertainment, clubs, uh, socializing, bars, or, 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 or other forms or other medias of entertainment. Nothing is there. It might be in big cities of this country, but what is there for the millions of people who are, say, in a small little places like Jaisalmer. I was there filming once. There are three theatres which are never empty. They always fall because that is the only entertainment. There is no restaurant in Jaisalmer. There is one small little road and it is a, a beautiful city in Rajasthan. And what do people do? Well, in the evening, the only recreation is that they go and see a film. And if they find something nice in that film, they feel that they're not cheated and they're no fools of anybody and they're intelligent, they've appreciated somebody's work. They're happy and I'm happy also. Tremendous. Just for the benefit of viewers, as you're probably aware, India makes the largest number of motion pictures in the world and Indian movie-going population is one of the largest in the world. Indian motion pictures are based on several obsessions, as uh, Raji was mentioning earlier, the taboo obsession, the security obsession, the omnipotent obsession. A combination of all these things make the movie a tremendous venture and a great entertainment factor. How does a great man like Raj Kapoor please the audience? Because it's exactly what he was talking about in terms of not fooling the audience, but giving them a part of reality with a tinge of fantasy. Let's see a sample of his outstanding work as a director now and not just as an actor alone. Watch this. रंडी की लाज बचाने कोई नहीं आता। लाज तो अपने मोहन को मैं कब की दे चुकी हूँ साहब? बातों की आड़ में सती सावित्री मत बन। बुकार, चीख, चिल्ला, वरना लोग कहेंगे गंगा ने नंगा होना चुपचाप सह लिया। I want to see Raj Kapoor as an actor and Mr. Raj Kapoor as a director. What were the changes that you personally went through yourself? My becoming an actor was an accident. <laughs> I have always wanted to be a filmmaker ever since I was, I left school. I tell you, I have not many academic qualifications to my credits, except this, that for 10 years, I have toiled, assisted, and literally been washing the floors of film studios. I have worked in each and every department of the film industry right from lab to editing and even maintenance of studio cars. 
And I had done all this, I should say, that I credited to my father. So when I wanted to leave school, he asked me, why do you want to leave school? I said, sir, if I do my graduation, then what happens? Go to college. Well, if you want to become a lawyer, you will go to law college. If you want to become a doctor, you go to a medical college. And if you want to become a filmmaker, where do you go, sir? He somehow rather hooked on it. He didn't have an answer because there were no institutions then in India. The only institution would be the studios. By trial and error. I said, I don't want to become a doctor. I don't want to become a lawyer. The profession that I like to do is what you're doing, sir. And the only way to learn it, that if you can get me to, into some studio, and that is how I began my career, as probably the sixth or seventh uh, assistant, a trolley puller or a clapper boy, or somewhere in the uh, laboratory, picking up odd shots in the editing department, and looking at the gamma pieces from the solutions. And, but then that gave me a lot of basic mental training about cinema. So I fundamentally, basically wanted to be a filmmaker. And it was at one such uh, opportunity that uh, when I was working with my father in theater, I did all, all the work, right from lighting on the stage to costumes, to the sets, direction, art direction, that he cast me in one of his play with a small little role. And I, I was young, I couldn't refuse my father. Right, sir, I'll do that. And there on that stage at the opening of the play, Divar, I was discovered by the film industry after 10 years that here is an actor. And it was there the gentleman director and the studio owner the late Chandulal Shah, where I worked, right in front in the, them, in their studios, they never knew who I was. Mr. Kedar Sharma, who gave me the first lead in his picture, Neil Kamal, as an actor. Uncle, you know what's fascinating? You're a writer, you're a poet, you're a painter. Yes. And that, you're a filmmaker. Yes. <laughs> and among all these functions, yes. which one was your most favorite? And if you I were to start all over again in your life, and if you were now 20 years old, yes. would you have done anything differently in your life? Than no, I would have followed the same thing. I give you one example. Once upon a time, when Rajkur Neel Kamal was to be made, right. Mr. Kedar Sharma, who gave me the first lead in his picture, Neel Kamal as an actor, I assisted him for three films. He never knew that till he saw me on the stage. And that is how the acting came in me. I had something behind my mind, even though I became a star and an actor in cinema, was that the money that I got, I collected. I wanted to produce a film. And that is how I became a producer, director and an actor. All three rolled in one simultaneously as I started my career in acting, I got little money for playing those roles in films. And with that money, I started a picture of my own. RK Films was then born in the year 1946. <laughs> 
Hope you're enjoying this exclusive special, which is specially dedicated to one of the outstanding personalities of international stature, Mr. Raj Kapoor. Raji, tell me about your trips overseas. I know you're popular, extremely popular in the Soviet Union, and you've been a state guest there. Tell us about your foreign trips. I've had the pleasure of uh, earlier visiting the United States when, uh, way back in 52, uh, a delegation was invited. Of course, uh, it was by the American Motion Picture Producers Association, augmented by the government financially. But it was Mr. Frank Capra who had initiated, after his first visit to the first international film competition in India, when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru inaugurated. And that was my first experience going abroad to a film world. And uh, what we gained and what we saw and the personalities we met, it was an experience. Yes, I've heard about it, sir. In fact, I'd like to comment a little bit on that to just digress. My father has described you as the live wire of the delegation. My father was on the delegation, if you recall, with you. The pleasure of being in his company also. and. We went along together beautifully, and the reason why he called me a live wire was that uh, I suppose we were, the two of us were interested in everything that went around there in the cinema world of uh, Hollywood. And uh, that is one reason. And of course, your father is a very kind man. And uh, well, my experience is, is there was that the world of cinema that we, we learned from or we, we saw as we, when we were young, the American cinema, we went right within to the core of their hearts and they opened up their doors to tell us what we wanted to know. And I spoke little, but I kept my ears wide, wide open to put in anything and everything what I could hear and what I could see. That was my first experience. Immediately on return, there was another delegation invited by the Soviet Union. I was fortunate enough to be included in that delegation also. We were asked to bring our work, and we took our films along, and we showed them our films. Of course, they were immediately translated in different languages of the Soviet Union. And when they saw those films, they came closer not only to the members of that delegation, but to the people of India. Now that was a very important, significant factor, which we all realized. And for me, yes, I had a film of mine called Avara, the Vagabond, which they liked tremendously. And having liked my work, naturally, I got a lot of affection from them, which till today is there. Affection and love that they have given to the Vagabond or to that work of mine, Avara, is actually symbolically to the young spirit of the youth of India at that time. That Vagabond, lovable Vagabond, who was seeking and searching for love and affection and friendship. And whoever extended his hand, he got hold of it. That is what I think is the symbol and probably a little contribution to cinema of this friendship of India and the Soviet Union. I have also traveled in the Middle East countries. There too, we had the pleasure of taking our work, the Indian cinema, 
and we opened a lot of new areas of screening and bringing India closer to many countries who probably were not aware that here was a subcontinent of the third world which was marching gradually towards freedom, social freedom, economic freedom, equality and democracy. That here was a country that was to the ideals of Gandhi and Nehru's, that here is the country. Every country goes through a lot of problems. We also have problems, but nevertheless, we have ideals. And behind those ideals, there's a certain determination, which is the spiritualism behind. And spiritualism is the spirit. And this is one thing which wherever I have been abroad, I have then realized that we must take our work and show them this is what real India is. Yes, there have been great masters of cinema who in the West, Western Hemisphere, like uh, Europe and America, Mr. Ray has also taken the Indian cinema and has been great, great. He's the master of the, the, the Indian cinema there and he's revered and his work is revered. We did not have that opportunity to bring our cinema to the Western world then. But today, of course, we are grateful to mainly the Asian viewers for whom primarily Indian cinema went wherever they settled. And from there, the, 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 the area gradually developed and went to Western audiences also who were keen to know does the Ganges still flow in India or not? Satyo, today Ganga ki gandagi ko saaf karne ka jo beda uthaya gaya hai, wo apne aap mein bahut bada dharmik aur mahan karya hai. Meri aap se sirf ek prarthna hai, ki aap un logon ka saath dijiye, jinnon ne apne khun se, apne parivar ka balidan de kar, Ganga ki pavitrata ki raksha ki. Purab mein rang badal gaya hua jal bhi khara, Kapoor's method of creative editing was said to be original. And his final result of cutting the film and weaving out the powerful rhythm, outstanding. Here's a sample now of his work as director. Mr. Raj Kapoor was a master painter of human nature. No less it is said than a Turner or a Rembrandt. Back now to Chandrasekhar and the great Raj Kapoor. On a lighter subject now, coming to your family, for a man of such great talent and so much time that you have invested in this field, I, I'm even surprised that you had time for a family. But anyway, you've got, uh, your sons are really now you know, following your footsteps and like father, like the, like son, they say, and so their their contribution is really beginning to now show in the industry. Tell us a little bit about your wife and your family, sir. To be very honest with you, I don't think I have been a good family man. And if you accredit all this, that I have a family, the greatest credit and virtue is Mrs. Raj Kapoor. It is she who has tolerated me for the last now, uh, I think, uh, 33 years. And it is she who has gone through all along with me in whatever I have been able to do in my career and stood by me and read this beautiful family. All credit to Krishna Kapoor. Though we don't go along together very well, <laughs> we've never been uh, on beautiful terms ever for that matter, but then we have always been together. <laughs> and the credit is hers, not mine. I can assure you, she is a very kind and tolerant woman. And she has been a great 
daughter-in-law to my parents and cared and looked after them. That is this is the, the truth about the family of Raj Kapoor. Of course, I have three sons. Two of them are on their own now. They are actors, directors, they are stars. The youngest is being groomed. He is being taught the way I learned right from scratch. So he too wanted to be the same way as I told my father. So I put him here in the studio and he also sweeps the floors, picks up the lights, assists, goes to the laboratory, sits up in the editing room and edits and is learning the way this craft should be learned. Such bold तूने क्या कहा जिससे मेरी माँ मर गई? कुछ नहीं कहा पिताजी, कुछ नहीं कहा। मेरी माँ तो मर गई लेकिन तुझे जिंदा छोड़कर ये वंश आगे नहीं बढ़ने दूँगा। मैं ही मैं हूँ, मैं ही मैं हूँ, दूसरा कोई नहीं। कहने तो जी कहता रहे, खिलते हैं गुल यहाँ। आपने बुलाया इसलिए। and I think then we have a lot between Krishna and myself on the last lap of life to reminisce what we did, how we lived through, and we still are together. We've been talking to Mr. Raj Kapoor, whose contribution to the uh, Indian motion picture industry has been simply outstanding. He would be in the history books of India and the motion picture industry for centuries to come. But before we end this program, we want to have some special words of greetings from Mr. Raj Kapoor for people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, East Africa, South Africa, West Indies, Guyana, and the Caribbean, and from people from Fiji Islands and other places, in addition to Canadians and Americans who are watching this program. Let's have some special words of greetings from Mr. Raj Kapoor. To all you beautiful people who are watching this program, I thank you all for giving me this opportunity of telling you something, talking about my work and the Indian film industry. I'm very happy to have talked to you, to have shared with you a few thoughts of mine. I'm grateful to you all. But there's just one little painful thought that comes to me. You can see me. Unfortunately, I can't see you. And perhaps one day I pray that I shall be able to see you all and personally thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Jane kaha gaye wo din 